Hello and welcome to the Black Hat Bushcraft channel. If you watch my channel often, most likely you know that I'm an avid hammock camper. For me, there's no better way or more comfortable way to get a good night's sleep in the woods than to set up a hammock between two trees. Get yourself up off the ground, especially this time of year. It's summer and there's lots of crawlers out, um, ants and spiders and ticks and that stuff's all over the ground. So getting up in a hammock allows me to get off the ground. It allows me to be inside of a bug net, which helps to keep the mosquitoes off, which are absolutely awful right now. You'll probably hear some in the course of this video. Um, but it allows you again to get up off the ground. For me, I'm a four season hammock camper. So you take the coldest month of the year and I'll get into a hammock, use a nice, uh, under quilt and an over quilt if it needs be I'll even get myself some uh, hot hands and throw in there to keep my feet warm but I just get a good night's sleep when I'm in a hammock hot weather cold weather alike so today what I wanted to do was a beginner's hammock setup video just kind of show a very basic way to set up your hammock because I've had several people ask me about this I know sometimes we take for granted that everybody has done this or everybody knows this but if you're new to hammock camping this will show you the most simple way to get yourself set up and started and at the same time I wanted to do a product review for the new Pathfinder bug net hammock and this hammock will be releasing on July 2nd I think this is an excellent product I've had a chance to hang it up have it out for several days I've slept in it um, just got a really good feel for this product the reason I think it's such a great deal is because it is a hammock a bug net a ridge line and tree straps all for one price of $55.95 again it releases on July 2nd so I know a lot of people have been kind of uh, anticipating the release of this hammock has been long awaited so I thought today I would bring it out here do a basic hammock setup show you what this thing looks like in case you're interested in it and kill two birds with one stone so let's get out this new pathfinder bug net hammock get it hung up and take a look at it okay so what I have here is the pathfinder hammock this is how it comes to you the bag that this is all in is attached to the hammock and gives you a gear pocket when you're hanging in your hammock it's a place to put your cell phone or your knife or pocket change or whatever you have and when you get ready to pack up your hammock you just stuff it all back into this bag and this one piece you do have this nice compression strap here with a simple buckle and uh, all very well done the stuff is so nice good materials you can see here on the hammock it shows that a 70 denier parachute nylon two carabiners two tree straps and a reinforced bug net it also comes with a ridge line which is in here you just have a draw strap there here's your tree straps I really like these first of all because a lot of times when you get tree straps they're blue and red and funky colors and this is uh, actually brown which is nice you have your pathfinder patch here you can see everything's done nice and this is just a daisy chain style tree strap which honestly i just continue to come back to this over and over again i've tried whoopee slings and i've shown in other videos myself setting up my hammock with whoopee slings i love them they're great but for just ease of use simplicity beginners i would recommend these daisy chain style tree straps you just throw them on the tree and it gives you uh, multiple settings you can perfectly get your hammock hung with these things and um, they're very easy to carry they come packed in the hammock bag uh, just a great system you also get this cordage which is good for a ridge line to hold up your bug net um, so we'll, we'll show that in just a minute and then of course you have the hammock itself two carabiners are attached that's it everything is comp uh, compact as far as being in one bag so what I have here is just a Pathfinder 8x8 tarp which I've shown in other videos and talked about and this is just the bag that I'm using to carry my ridge lines and toggles and just everything that I need for shelter setups today so that's all the stuff I'll be using in here um, but that's a good look at it let's get it hung up so whenever I pick out two trees that I think are ideal to hammock camp between I like to walk off the space heel to toe between those two trees just to make sure that I have enough distance and not too much distance to get a proper hang. I know that the Pathfinder bug net hammock is an 11 foot hammock so I need at least 11 foot and then a little extra for my tree straps and to get the proper hang. So what I'm going to do is come over to my first tree and put my heel against it and now just heel to toe. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So it's approximately 16 paces from the first tree to the second tree. So now I know that I have plenty of distance, but yet it's not too far or unreasonable to hang my hammock. So this will work out nicely. All right, so now that we're ready to install our tree straps, I'm gonna show you two different methods. The first is the most basic and the obvious way to do this. On our tree strap, we have one loop at the far end 
And then way down here, we have our daisy chain of loops. All you have to do is wrap this thing around the tree and then just feed the opposite end through that loop and lock it down. And that's it. There's nothing wrong with this. It works well. However, what I found is sometimes when you use this and you're in your hammock, let's say for multiple days and you're moving around at night and shifting, trying to get yourself comfortable, sometimes what will happen is this strap can start to work its way down the tree, especially during the day when you're not in your hammock and there's not a lot of weight on it, the wind blows and so forth, sometimes it can slip down. It's not a big issue, but one thing I found that works really well for me is I like to take a carabiner and attach on this original loop here, all right? So this is the opposite end of the daisy chain. The daisy chain's down on this end, okay? And what I'll do is I'll bring that carabiner up to the tree where I want it to be, and now I'll wrap this strap around on top of itself. I'll come all the way around, just like that. And now after one turn, and if you wanna take up excess strap, you can do three, four, five turns if you want. Then you just pop it back through the locking gate of that carabiner, and now, no matter what, this thing is not gonna slide down the tree because you have this wrap secure here and then you're actually hanging from this point here. So uh, I think that there's a couple of benefits. One, your straps don't slip. Two, you're dividing your weight over more surface area on this tree. So if you're really conscious about not injuring the bark on the tree, this gives you more surface area contact. So it's distributing your weight over more surface area. It's not a huge deal, but just in case, it's a method that I've used and it works well for me. Just to show you a close-up version of what I just did, I lay the carabiner here on the tree. I have the loading gate up, and now I simply wrap the strap around on top of itself, pinning that in place. And now I could make as many wraps right here as I want. I'm just gonna do a single. And now all I have to do is just push that down through the loading gate, and I have my strap cinched in place really nice. The good thing about this is when it's time to go, I simply open the loading gate, pull my strap out, and I can reclaim my strap. It's a great system. Now I've got my hammock here, and if you pack this thing up just right, which I'll show you, you'll have a carabiner right here on top. What I'm gonna do is come down this daisy chain, and I'm gonna count one, two, three, four. I'm gonna go to the fourth loop down. And I'll just remember that I went four loops down, and I'm gonna hook in my carabiner right there. And now I can just walk my hammock out to the other tree. And now keep in tension so that my hammock is up off the ground. I'll get to the second carabiner here. Make sure this thing is bug net up. Looks right. And now I can simply hook in my next carabiner. And when I come over to the tree strap, if I go four strip, uh, Four loops down, my hammock's gonna be basically on the ground. So I know that that other one's gonna to have to move up. I'm gonna to come to the top loop on this strap. And now I'm gonna go back and readjust on the other side. All right, so I have my hammock hung, as you can see here behind me. And one thing I wanted to mention is, if you're using these daisy chain straps, it's very important to keep them equal on both sides. For my setup right now, I have this thing attached into the first loop. And on the opposite side, I have it on the second loop. Ideally, I'd have two and two, or one and one. Um, what you wanna avoid is having your hammock be much tighter on one side than it is the other. In other words, closer to one tree than the other. You want it in the middle of those two trees and that'll give you the proper angle, hang angle, and sag in your hammock to get comfortable. Um, so in this case, I had to go up one loop on one side, not a big deal, but just be aware of that. Don't be on number five the fifth loop over here and the first loop over here because you're going to be way too close to one of those trees and it's going to make it an awkward hang. So quick tip on using your daisy chain straps. All right, so once I get my hammock hung where I think it should be, I always come to that hammock and sit down in it. And when I sit, I want that thing to sag such that it's comfortable for me to sit in like a chair. Honestly, that's one of the big benefits of a hammock to me anyway is that it serves as a nice lounge chair in camp. When you're in camp, you wanna be able to relax and take it easy. And this gives me a nice comfortable place to sit, read a book, relax, talk with friends if you're camping with others. And this is just a very comfortable uh, way to do that. Get that bug net out of my way. But you can see, I can lay back in this thing and it's just very comfortable uh, to sit in. And again, I want it to be easy for me to get up. So when I go to stand up, my feet are already on the ground and it's easy to get up. If you're too low, it becomes very difficult uh, to, 
get up out of the hammock. And if you're too high, uh, there's always a risk because anytime you hang, hang in a hammock, there's a possibility that that thing could fall. You, know, you never know. And so if you're way up high and you fall, then that's a longer distance to the ground and more injury that you're gonna receive in doing that. So I like my hammock to be as close to the ground as I can get it while still maintaining this optimal height of being able to use it as a chair. So now that I'm confident that I've got my hammock hung exactly where I want it to be, I'm gonna install my quick deploy ridge line over top. And this will serve two purposes. One, to support this bug net to keep it up off of me, and also to support my tarp over top for cover. Go ahead and toggle this out just over my head height. Bring it off to the other side. Now I'll just come around my tree and use a simple rope tackle to get this ridge line nice and tight. Good. Now I have several Prusik knots along this line that I can use for my tarp and for my bug net. All right, along the top of this bug net is a nice reinforcement. And on each corner is a plastic loop that you can use to pull this thing up to your ridge line. And I'm just going to toggle it out with a Prusik knot. That's as simple as pulling this thing up and just running this little bank line loop through. Install a toggle. Just like that. And now I can cinch this out. And now I just have to repeat that process on the opposite side. Just run that bank line right through this little plastic loop. Install a toggle. And now I can just pull that out and make it nice and tight along that ridge line. So you can see that prusik here and how it connects into the loop with that toggle. And of course, just run down the line. And we have the same setup right here. Once again, you can see how that prusik performs. So this hammock has a really nice feature right here, which is this a little elastic loop. And the advantages of that are you could hang a lamp in here if you're in here reading at night. It has one at both ends, so whichever end your head's on, you got a spot to hang your lamp. However, if you don't want your bug net deployed right now, we've already got this toggle up here, so I can just pull that elastic band down and just hook it back over this toggle that's holding our bug net up to our ridge line. And now I have this nice and open. So now that I have everything set up as I think it should be, I'm going to get in this hammock one more time and I want to just make sure that everything's comfortable. My feet are still perfectly uh, positioned on the ground so that I can use this as a chair. And I, the key to sleeping in a hammock comfortably is to lay diagonal. If you have a double wide hammock or an asymmetrical hammock which is designed for this, you get into it and you turn your body diagonal. And when you do that, you actually end up laying somewhat flat. I've had so many people over the years tell me that they don't get comfortable in a hammock. And I ask them, how do you lay? And they're like, well, I just lay in it. You're shaped like a banana. That's very uncomfortable and hard on the back. Your uh, blood circulation goes out of your feet uh, because your feet are up and therefore feet get cold, things like that. But if you get in this hammock the right way, you can get very comfortable. All right, so what I do when I get in the hammock is I'm gonna always put my feet to the right side of the hammock, to the far right. And I'm gonna lay diagonal. I'm gonna get the material positioned just like I want it. And I'm gonna push my shoulder into the left wall of this hammock. So my shoulders to the left, feet to the right. And now I just have to kind of adjust the material a bit until I feel comfortable. I wanna make sure that my feet are below my heart level. Head is up just a little bit, supported by the back wall of the hammock. And already without much uh, fussing around, I actually am quite comfortable. And I can subtly adjust to get everything positioned just right. But what I find is once I get myself set just right, I sleep all night and I hardly move. Um, and so the key again is that you're laying somewhat level because of this diagonal. That's why you want your hammock to sag a little bit. A lot of people want it to be tight, but the little sag allows you to twist in here diagonally and get an actual flat lay in your hammock, right? So again, for me, this is just totally comfortable. Every inch of my body feels supported by the hammock. There's no uh, spots where I feel saggy. Everything is just comfortable. And I could sleep right here, tilt my hat down right now, get myself a good nap. All right, so now that we've talked about the hammock setup in detail, it's only proper for me to go ahead and install a tarp. And the tarp that is custom fit for this hammock is this Pathfinder 8x8. 
Of course, you could use any tarp over top of this hammock, and you can use this tarp with any hammock. But being an 11 foot hammock with an eight foot tarp, we're gonna have to turn this on a diagonal. And a lot of people really like that. Honestly, I love an A-frame over my hammock, but you have to have a bigger tarp. The nice thing about a smaller tarp, more compact and lightweight. Let's see what this setup looks like with the Pathfinder tarp installed. The nice thing about the ridge line I've got is there's two other Prusiks already set up for this one. So I can just throw the tarp over top of all of this, connect it in with two toggles, stake it out on two points, and we'll be good to go. Let's do it now. All right, so now that we've got everything set up, let's take a look at how it all comes together. Very simple. See, I've got that hooked in on that daisy chain. The bug net is right up against the tarp. Just a little separation there. The weight of the bug net causes just a slight sag. You see, we've got that just staked out. Over here on this other side. Just used our rope tackle. And once again, up under here. Nice thing about that brown color is it gives it a nice shade underneath of here. And that's another thing I enjoy about a bug net is it gives you nice shade when you're laying in it. Again, if we wanted, we could pull that bug net up and attach it at the top. And you can see we have our little stuff sack right here that we can put things out of our pocket, cell phone, and so forth. So just a great setup. You see I have plenty of coverage right here. How that tarp overlaps the buckle and the strap. And it's that way on both, both sides. Plenty of coverage there. And if the weather was going to really get foul, we could always drop this ridge line down just a little bit to seal that thing up tighter. But just a nice, simple, clean setup. Really like it. So as you can see, I've unstaked one corner of my tarp and just flipped it back over the ridge line. The sun will probably be setting over this direction this evening, so it'll give it a nice sun shade. Makes it easy for me to get in and out of the hammock. I've got my bug net pulled up here. If I just want to sit around camp and talk to friends, this gives me a comfortable seat to do that. Or if I'm putting my bedding and, and uh, sleeping gear and so forth in my hammock, it makes it easy to do so. So just a great, simple system. Uh, with this thing retailing at $55.95, I think it's going to be hard to beat, especially because you're getting the hammock, the bug net, a ridge line and even the tree straps all in one package. Again, this is not an ultra lightweight backpacker's hammock. It's a little bit bigger um, than some hammocks. However, you gotta remember that you've got everything, tree straps, bug net, and all in one package. So for the money, I think it'll be really hard to beat this system. And if you're not hiking long range or if you're not carrying massive amounts of gear, I don't think it would be a problem, especially if you use that quick tip of reducing the weight with the buckles. You can throw a couple of lightweight um, climbing carabiners on this thing and you'll drop several ounces for with just those steel carabiners. But if you want something that's heavy duty and made for life, those steel carabiners are great. Um, so again, just a great system. And for beginners, it'd be hot, hard to top this. Um, if you're new to hammock camping, I've had several people tell me they tried hammock camping and hated it. Uh, maybe with some of these quick tips I've thrown out today, maybe you go back and revisit that idea. Get in your hammock, adjust a little bit, make some adjustments, and you may find that you sleep really well in a hammock. For me, again, nothing better than a good night's sleep in a hammock. Uh, especially this time of year, it's hot weather out here, and there's lots of crawlers on the ground, such as fire ants, ticks, spiders, mosquitoes. So getting up off of that ground and being enclosed in a bug net like this is really nice. And also, this time of year, taking advantage of that natural convection, that air underneath of you, helps keep you cool. It's 95 here today. It'll be in the 80s tonight. So sleeping in a hammock could be very nice as opposed to being on the ground with all those crawlers all over you. Um, so you can stay nice and cool. In the winter time, you can buy really nice gear such as under blankets or under quilts, over quilts, and gear that'll keep you warm. And if you get into hammock camping and you really enjoy it, it's worth the investment because a good night's sleep in the woods is priceless. Um, so it's something if you enjoy that, you can buy some, upgrade your gear over time and get a really nice sleep system that you can sleep comfortably in four seasons of the year. I want to thank you guys for taking the time to tune into this video. I hope you've enjoyed this and maybe picked up a tip or two along the way. If you were just interested in taking a look at what this new Pathfinder hammock is going to look like, this gives you a good look at it, I hope. Thank you guys again for all your support. Please click the like button. Please subscribe. And if you have some comments or questions, feel free to leave them down below. There'll be links uh, to my Self-Reliance Outfitters affiliate page, also my Amazon, other places. If you just want to take a look at where I get my gear or what gear I'm using, all of that information is down below in the description box. Thank you guys. Until the next video, y'all take care, be safe, and God bless. To pack up this 
hammock, I simply have to release the bug net with these toggles. And now, simply unhook the carabiner on one side. I'll come center and get this little bag that it all goes in and drop that carabiner in. That'll be the last thing I need. And I start stuffing the hammock. You don't have to fold it, roll it, or anything. Just stuff that thing down in there and continue to work your way over to the other tree strap. And this way, the last thing that will go in this stuff sack will be that last carabiner. And by doing it this way, I keep my hammock up off the wet ground. If the ground is wet, now I can unhook this, just like that, and lay it right on top. All right, so I have that carabiner right here on top. And now I have my hammock straps all rolled up. I put them right here on top, just like this. Grab that cinch strap, lower that cord lock down. And we have our compression strap here. And just simply wrap that around the hammock. Pull over from the other side. Click that, and we can tension that thing down as much as you want to compress this, make it a little bit nicer fit in our pack. Great system.